sense of being alive. This is very important. What's, what's about a little bit humility? You know, you need a certain amount of arrogance to stand before God and pray. But also, you know, just know your limits. You know, on one hand, we have no limits. On one hand, I give everything in the world. On the other hand, I also have mamas to know. You know, he said a certain arrogance is so much mud, so much dirt. You take the purest water, you throw in a little mud, and right away everything is dirty. Hey, I'm so glad to see you. One more very important thing. Everything is so much deeper than we'll ever know, right? So much deeper. And everything is so much meaning, you know? But again, if I'm sad and I'm disconnected, then nothing connects. You know, imagine I would be up in heaven, looked down at my whole life. See, the father's is connected. Every little thing I'm doing is connected. Every person I uh, meet on the street, you know, it's a crazy thing. Imagine tomorrow morning I wake up, I go on Broadway and I meet a certain person. It was Mama's decree in heaven when God, God created the world. I should meet that person on, on, on Wednesday morning whatever is tomorrow the day. But it has to do with this day, and it had to go through so much alive until that very second. That I should know what to tell this person. So it has to be clear to me, like, you know, in God's shoe store, everything fits. <laughs> but if you buy your shoes somewhere else, you know, it's better. the greatest, the not one also the the best thing in life is you get to taste a little bit of the inner light of the, <coughs> of the hidden light. There's so much, so much depth behind it. You know, what's the closest you can get to another human being? The closest you can get if you get a taste of everything which is hidden in their heart. Remember when Nachman says, and all the rebels are so kind. How do you know how much somebody loves you? When they open up and they use their secrets to love you. It is God the same way. God only tells the secrets. How much? If you love him so much, he loves you back. That's the secret. The Torah. If you love the Torah so much, the Torah loves you back. The Torah gives you a taste of the secret. But if you just study the Torah, you know, you know, you can ask the person, tell me something about yourself. They'll tell you, I was born 1885, and that's it. So if you think, you mean the inside, but they're the not interested in something real. Same the Torah. The Torah will not let you know the inside. Unless Mama she told his Mama, she loved the Torah so much. Then this one very, this is not a When you wake up in the morning, really, you should not say anything unless, until you say the blessing of the Torah. Because the moment you say the blessing of the Torah, you're already connected to, to a different gas station. Your whole energy comes away from a different place. You know what the Sabbath says? You know, you say Krishna, has 248 words, 
corresponding to the two of the 48 limbs we have. So he says, until he says Kishma, physically his bones are shaking. They're not together. After he says Kishma, it becomes a match. So it's very, very important, friends, whatever level you're on. You've got to say the work of the Torah because basically every word we utter should be Torah. Every word we utter should be God's word. What do you mean by brachas and tarots? The special ones? Or oh, Mr. Rabbi, what? Which, which are the brachas? Do you know, special ones are the ones of the one before. If, one? You, if you have no time to say all three, you have to say in the morning when you wake up, Sheba Kabono, Kal Ami, and so on and so on. So much. What's that mean? It's what you think you have, have chosen us from all the nations and given the term. You know, something else wrong. You have to know who you are, right? If you're a doctor, you behave like a doctor. If you're a, a garbage collector, you go out and collect garbage, right? Unless it's clear to you in the morning that God has chosen to give you the Torah, you will not know what to do out there. It's very important that Sorry, what? Very important, important to mention also that most of us can hold that all women should also, also say that bracha. And if they saying. don't say that bracha in the morning when they guys, because they're not accustomed to davening in the morning, whenever they sit down to learn, they have to, they're obligated to say that bracha at that time. Yeah. 100%. If you rub a gummy, 100% right. It's, it's not, no, no, 100%, you're right. 100%. Okay. Okay, friends, let's know it was Hanukkah, because the sad is a beautiful thing is I'm going Friday when to Montreal, and then I'm going to Brazil, and then I won't see until Shabbos Hanukkah being a chef. <laughs> okay, now let me tell you something, friends, for real. I think I told you this 500 times yesterday, I think there's one person that didn't say it yet. I gave a concert. Uh, somewhere in the city, and uh, the rabbi picked me up here to do something in the store waiting outside. There's also a beautiful party. Two should live long and happy. Two women come out, anyway, and uh, obviously, who color they had, I don't know what color they had before, <laughs> but the one they had now, Anyway, <laughs> you know, real shallow, shallow women, you know. And I'm not judging them, because did anybody ever take out to teach them? No, I'm not knocking it. But the fact is, nothing. One says to the other, ha, huh, you know, I completely forgot last week was Hanukkah. So the other one says, it's okay. It's not such a biggie. You know what that means? Because that's very right. What's Hanukkah? Hanukkah is nothing, right? It's in light. You know, I was once in the house of a very outstanding Jewish leader, Shulamanak. And he was making a phone call. He didn't really have so much time because he's very busy, you know, serving Israel. So he has his phone, and while he's talking on the phone, he's speaking with the candle. And then the other one is talking, and he makes a word. Uh, uh, Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he looks kind of And then he hangs up and goes out. Couldn't believe my eyes. He never came back to the room again. That's it. I want you, friends, if you don't take your time to sit for the Hanukkah line, I don't say don't kill me at all, but well, but you're missing. 
I want you to know I'm Hanukkah without telling you a long story. The little prophecy we have, the little intuition we have, and the little clearness we have about them, the headquarters of Hanukkah. Pays like the headquarters of freedom, and so on, through the Torah, showing the keeper forgiveness, focus, joy. What, what's Hanukkah? Hanukkah is the headquarters for the inner life. You know, Mamish, you know, in sun would sit at least anything between four and eight or ten hours. Mamish didn't take his eyes off from the camera. And I think if people watched him, he didn't move his eyelids. Mamish, I don't know how simple you are being, you can do it. How long did the person not move the island? For hours, yeah. I don't know. For how long? We, we always we have to. We have to drink. Holy Santa did. It's not important. Holy Santa didn't take the time. I want you know the highest, really, where do you find heaven? where you can sit and watch a candle for 14 hours, have you, right? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, my highest comic life expansion, besides what I saw in Bogum, was in the house of Lord Prayer. You know, wow. <laughs> we, did, we didn't even know ourselves to do the work. The first comic you know, the first comic when I started, most of the kids didn't know what comic is, and they, they knew, they definitely know what it is. I remember I arrived in the... Were you there at that time? Um, well, I remember one of first the first Hanukkah. <laughs> so what the first Hanukkah? The second Hanukkah had already broken and kids, you know, they knew what was happening. First Hanukkah, I arrived at the airport. The heaven picked me up. I remember I arrived at 20. Then we had, we had about four or five cars. That's always like, is that one of the nights you dance for three in the morning? Or that was, that was every night you dance for three yeah. in the morning. <laughs> anyway, I remember, <laughs> it was not it was. Oh I remember 100, 180 people went to the mikvah. 180 people. Man. <laughs> then they went to the mikvah. What's said to them? I'm talking to you seriously. Then the women went after that, we waited till 11.30. Women were exactly 93. Promise, 93. 12 o'clock, the bench lift. And then we were up, Mamish. We were, Mamish, we didn't go to sleep all night, we got And every few minutes, we put in more oil, so it should never go out. We watched the camera for 14 hours. It's a high, I mean, just, we left from this world. You see, I didn't have enough guts. I ate mamish to describe the taste of the 14 hours. And then Eliyahu, the mayor took it to Israel, I don't remember, they gave it to Idalia, and I don't know where they are now. But it was unbelievable. So I'm just sending you friends, I go to the and sit down. I'm really to use more of You know, most people think to memory has to do with the past. I want you to know something awesome. Human memory has to do with the past. Heavenly memory is the future. Heavenly memory is the future. The Yer of Rachman says, you know, everybody knows that, that Shem and Zayis, oil, um, how do you say Shem and Zayis, of the um, olive, oil. olive oil, is good for memory. He said, but olive oil, the oil of Hanukkah, 
is restoring to us our memory in the world to come. It doesn't mean that after Hashem Shalom will die, I'll be in heaven in hell a few years and I'm going to heaven. We're not talking about that. Almond also means that there is something is coming which is deeper than Almond. That the world is not yet the way it's supposed to be. Mamasha, remember all this. Remember the future. So he says, when, um, when a bench can exist, I'm drawing upon myself. Mamish different brain, brain cells. I have this great doctor, I don't know if you can testify to that or not. But your bench Hanukkah, the oil of Hanukkah, is just a healing for the brain. Mamish, a healing for the brain. A healing for clarity. And the deepest depth is healing, Mamish, for the inside life. You see, the Greeks, don't believe in prophecy, and the Greeks definitely do not believe that the human being is the higher being. They think, you know, okay, they are dogs, they are apples, they are human beings. All human beings have to think about is how to keep my body in shape and how to enjoy myself, and that's it. And after I did all this, then God the wisdom and I died to over it. What's about more than all this? something else. How, what do we know about God? Everybody in his or her level. Everybody in their level. You know what the sad truth is? We know very little. You know you can you can learn about God for a hundred years. What do we know? What do we know about the inside of but I want you to know something even so much deep. What do I know about the inside of my own children, my own wife, my own husband? What do I know about the inside of the inside of me? You know, so all of it. So how do you when the inside light is shining? How much God gives me a little inside you know what God is all about? And you know why we're so special? In the house, why we're husband and wife and children and kindled together? I'm watching my life, I'm watching the light of my children. No. So on Hanukkah, I want you to know something the deepest thing. Why is there so much hatred in the world? And we don't want you to pay attention to this for one minute. Why so much hate in the world? I only hate people if they don't have any sense of their inside. On the Hanukkah, when God opens the gates of the inside life, it's already another world. I want you to know something. Did you know, on Pesach, I'm not I don't have to stand outside my door and say, hey folks, you want to eat matzo? Because they don't eat matzo. On sukkahs, I'm not yelling or tell of the hey, please come to my sukkah. On the Kalinga, I'm standing with the camp by the door and I'm shining to the whole world. Because Kalinga, You know, I have to come to the world for something special. I have to tell them something they never heard before. You know, I tell the world something unbelievable. Legal is the president of the United States. I know. You know, when I stand at the street corner and make an announcement, they will be something nobody knows, right? Here I'm standing with the camera by my door and have an announcement. What do you say? Mamish, every year, 
Ram Shalai is coming here, it's shining, opening the gate of the inside of the inside. When you hear the world is passing by, they see the coming light. And now something happens to them. He says, with the light of Hanukkah, I can awaken somebody who has been asleep for 2,000 years. Remember, we were learning there's two ways of waking up people. In the middle of the night, I can yell and scream and chuckle and cry as I wake up. Or I can open the window, the sun is shining in. Oh, it's a beautiful job to wake up. The way I wake up the people of Shoshone is by blowing the show. It's beautiful, but it was happening. The way I wake up the people in Hanukkah, not only with the light of the sun, but this is the deepest, most glorious, most sweetest light of the world. And then he says, when those who are estranged from God, estranged from each other, when they see this light, uh, it feels so good. All of us, Ramesh, he says, the light of Hanukkah is for Shalom Bayes. That means Hanukkah makes peace between husband and wife. And even deeper than all this, Hanukkah makes peace between us and the world. Well, you know something very deep. Someone hurt my feelings very much. And then he says, forgive me, I forgive you. But don't immediately have peace between us. You know, we shouldn't even kick the God forgives us. It doesn't mean God is peaceful with us. You know what makes peace for me? I feel at home with you. Love to be with you. You know, if someone hurt my feelings, so they say, I forgive you. Please. Don't get the thought. And the Catholic you know what's established between us and God? My wish. Show them why. My wish is so peaceful with God again. God is so peaceful with us. One more thing is even so important. The downfall of the world was because the snake came and said bad things about God and about Adam, right? There are two people in the world, Adam and Eve. The snake comes to Eve and says bad things about Adam. The world says nothing else. He wants you to open your heart. What does the snake want of you? Imagine there are two people in the world. I mean, what's going on there? Whom does Kaveh have? Nobody. Kaveh has Eve. I mean, Odom, Odom has Kaveh, and Kaveh has Adam. To snake, tell them apart. So what happens after you tell them apart? They're the loneliest people in the world. Where, where, so where is this fight coming from? Because the snake said evil things about Adam. Remember, Chava said, you know, my husband told me not to eat it. Your husband must be kidding. You know, I always tell my friends, Adam is three hours older than Eve, right? So the snake says the age difference is much too big. You know, the first day, right? Adam was created at 12 and Eve at 3. And then 4 the snake came. The snake came. So you got to look at somebody much younger than your husband. He's, he's 3 hours older. But in the meantime, she has nobody, right? So you have nothing sad. So on Hanukkah, when the inner light is shining, when the inner light is shining, My inner light is shining, God's inner light is shining. That people automatically don't say bad things about each other. Then all the fighting starts. And the heavenly peace descends upon the world. If you remember, Hanukkah is the one day I'm not only thanking God for the miracle of Hanukkah. It's mamish, I'm 
seeking out for all the miracles in the world. Friends, what's the difference in heaven and hell when it's about a million times the difference? What's in heaven and hell? You know, in hell also they say a few things are good. But they say, yes, but that's basic. Most of the things are bad. What's heaven all about? See, heaven says, yeah, a few things are bad, but a lot of things are good. No. Heaven says everything is good. There's nothing bad at all. They say, it's kind of can. When I begin to thank God for all the miracles, suddenly I'm in paradise. And I realize everything. So he says, everybody has to know the days of Hanukkah. Mama should be spending in paradise. You know, Sukkot should be spent in heaven. Hanukkah is spent in paradise. You know what, what paradise is all about? Paradise is all about that I'm sitting there and I realize that everything is good. And you know my beautiful friends, Hanukkah is the one holiday when I add every night. I add every night. You know friends, it's, it's true on both sides. I'll tell you something is wrong, but I'm thinking I is kind of more wrong, right? My father told me once got, got a letter from this field, wonderful, most positive person in the world. He wrote him a letter, Mama she said he would get divorced, 20 people became widowed, and another people died. Then P.S. He said, I'm so sorry, forget to mention 10 more people who also died. <laughs> adding, adding, right? Kid is a season of first two there. But you can add on the other side, you can add on the good side. Tanaka I'm adding every night. You know why I'm not learning Torah properly? Because it's not clear to me that the whole time is so good. I live so much in the world, a little bit good, a little bit bad. But if everything I look at, and it's at the end of that. Kali is a good time to make a shiver. Yeah? Trying to marry off Sammy. Joseph, the book of the poor. Just regards to everyone. Yeah. Why is it so hard to make a shiver? Because every person has a good and a bad. Well, the Kali is a God who gives to me that everything is good. In the same way, a person is also completely good, no problem to make a shift. You know, friends, I love my children. I still wouldn't give them a million dollar cash because they don't know what to do with it. You know, God wants to give us so much in this way to give it to us because we don't know what to do with it. On the Hanukkah, God gives us those because on the Hanukkah, because on the Hanukkah, the great light is shining. God is trusting me so much. As I mentioned, so clear in my head. And I remember, I remember not only the past, I remember the future. And 
Have you ever seen light? There's light, a little bit dark, a little bit light, a little bit light, then there's a halo around it, right? And the same way in Hanukkah, every Jew has his own mark of the surrounding light, which is so deep and so beautiful. I, 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 go out for the best humans, the deepest coming in the world. Amen. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, friends, whatever, whatever you didn't ask in Abrashon, you can, you can mamish ask in Hanukkah, especially, would you, the Shoki was said, at this moment when I bench Hanukkah, there is no war between me and God. There is no war between
Zettige mit den Getränken. Und dann sehen wir schon Schabbos. Kannst du mal kennen, dass die das jetzt mitnehmen? Ja, die Karte ist hier, es ist Dezember 10th. Most of Shabbos, Dezember 10th. It's a Westside Institutional Synagogue. It is December 10th, Saturday night. So that's on Hanukkah. 76th Street. It's on 76th Street between Columbus and Amsterdam. And it's going to be higher than you can believe. Could you say something about your trip to Poland? If people want to get donations, where can they get it? How much should they make it out to you? Okay, the most important thing is. My mom is joining me to come to Poland. You've captured a person. Today? Today, December 31st. Saturday night. You're leaving Saturday night, you're arriving here in prison. New Year's Eve. New Year's Eve. How long? Ten days. Brain healing. Let me make something funny, something funny. A lot of people go to Poland and they just go to the graves. I mean, it's very holy, but it's very, very important. But I'm not. Talking into, I mean, going to the grave is very hard. It's not fun. The point is, since the Second World War, there was no contact between us Jews and the Polish people. And suddenly there's there's a great opening, a great opening. And I'm sure there's still a lot of anti-Semites there, but there are also a lot of people not anti-Semites. And Hashem had the great privilege of giving two concerts in Warsaw, one one. Uh, Krakow. Krakow, one in, the, uh, in large and one in Katowice, in the four major cities. There will be hopefully be thousands of people, and if you can come and be with us, it will be unbelievable, once in a lifetime, maybe twice. And also, if you have some extra bread or matzah left from circus or from Purim, because I don't think it's right, but in, in, in Poland, the poverty is just one of the poorest countries in the world. You know, let's assume there be 2,000 people at the concert, right? And you know, I'm not going there to make money, but just for kicks, someone said to the person of the theater, how much are you paying for a concert like this? How much are you paying the artist? Whatever they said, so many thousands of lots of the number of the dollars, he said 12,000. You know what that means? That means the admission of family is for us two cents. Mm. Or maybe one cent. If you live on 30 dollars a month, you're not spending 10 dollars for one country, right? So, Mama, if you could be there and to meet so many people, you can give them a little bit of money, give them a little bit of strength. If someone wants, I know a rabbi.